And so this all brings us here to today, where I announce that I am retired. Where I announce I am retiring from the NFL after 13 seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles. A very emotional Jason Kelsey officially putting an end to his first ballot Hall of Fame career, spent entirely here in Philadelphia, one of the most iconic athletes in our city's history. Hugs for his brother Travis, mother Donna, father Ed, and his wife Kelsey, you can see there at the end as well. Jason, Kylie Kelsey, Jason Kelsey now officially retired. It was a very emotional day, and he held court for a solid 45 minutes. We're going to dive all into it as we welcome you here to Bird's Huddle, powered by Fanatics Sportsbook, alongside Ruben Frank and Barrett Brooks. I am Amy Fidolso B. We knew this was coming. Truly the end of an era, though. Absolute era. You know, Jason Kelsey, he is what you would call a, a, a franchise figure, franchise mm -hmm. head. He, he's the one that, you know, when you think about the Philadelphia Eagles, you think about him. You think about the parade, you think about him. You think about just being... An athlete in Philadelphia, Jason Kelce is the guy you think about. Rube, you were there today in the, you know, the newsroom or the uh, the area where the press conference was, and I know he went around and shook everybody's hand and gave hugs. When you think about it, you've covered his entire career, and you've seen what he's, you know, started at and where he's ended. You got a hug there. Uh, it summed up a sitting, a fitting send-off. It felt like today, him just going around and, and shaking everyone's hand. He wanted to recognize everyone. We'd still be here if he actually did that. But I thought it was really fitting that he wanted to go make sure he showed appreciation to everyone. Yeah, that's who he is, and I think he did a, a beautiful job doing that in his in his talk. Of look, I mean, he, he could name a thousand people, teammates, coaches, but I thought he did a great job of really highlighting who is important to him and why uh, and, and what led to him being the player and the person he is. I thought that was the best thing about his remarks. It, it wasn't just thanking people, but it was kind of putting everything into context of why he was such a good fit in this city and, and why his personality resonated in this city and why today is so sad for so many Eagles fans. So quite, I mean, he's the blue collar guy, working mm -hmm. guy. You know, he's the guy who can go down and smash a beer with you. Um, and he, you know, he's just a guy that can go Get a cheesesteak with. He was yeah. just somebody, you know, he didn't have he didn't have any, you know, body like uh, you know, follow him around like escort or anything. He was just walking around just being amongst the people because that's who he is. Somebody's amongst the people. Yeah, he was an everyman, very relatable yep. when it came to that. And his story is remarkable. Walk on, a sixth round pick, uh, a guy that's undersized as a center, and now to go in and think about you know, this is a certified gold jacket hall of famer, Rube. Yeah, and when you talk about the greatest centers in history, um, he's on a very, very short list, one of only five to make six all-pro first teams in history. I mean, he's up there with uh, with a bunch of Hall of Famers like Bulldog Turner and Jim Ringo and uh, Dermonte Dawson. I mean, he's as good as anybody Mike ever Webster. played that mm -hmm. position. Mike Webster, yep. uh, Jim Ringo finished his career in, in Philadelphia That's his last few years. Uh, so I, I know in, in uh, August of 2029, I'll be in Canton with just about everybody else yeah. in this city. Uh, that will be quite the parade. That will probably rival the uh, Super Bowl as far as the parade of people headed to Canton for that one. Uh, you know, Barrett, not only did he play the game in an elite level, but he never missed a game. I think that that's another thing. You hear so much respect among his teammates, but for the fans, because this guy never took a playoff. He never took a game off. He played through everything. I don't understand how he played for that many years and still not miss a game. And, and I mean, he was held together half the time by bubble gum and duct tape. I mean, this guy leaves the game because he just hyperextended his elbow, can barely, you know, come and shake somebody's hands, saw that the backup was playing pretty bad, goes back in the game and mm. finishes the game off and we were able to win. That's the type of guy he was. He's one of those guys iconic because he went out there and he played the game the way it's supposed to be played. You know, all out every single play and still was able to play every single game that's that's incredible because playing in the trenches it is unforgiving. unforgiving there, there was one year i'll never forget it was the end of the year's locker clean out day and we're like boy jason you really managed to stay healthy this year you didn't miss any games you didn't miss any practices you're never on the injury report and he went through this whole litany of injuries that he had that nobody knew mm. about 
he needed surgery for this. He needed, you know, and that's just the way he never complained. He never talked about it. But uh, I think that's probably the biggest reason, you know, 13 years yeah. every day. It's a lot of snaps and it's time to, to rest his body. Yeah. I mean, he played at such a high level for all of that game, blood, sweat and tears. You know, Kelsey thanked his coaches, players from his life in football, from high school all the way through the pros. He also had some special words for the people here in Philadelphia. Some people struggle to play in this city. They can't handle the booze, the media, or our fans. Consider it a great blessing to play in the most passionate sports town in America. The sense of urgency in this city to win has pushed our organization, has fueled it to take chances, fix problems, and work tirelessly in an effort to win. At times, you hate it as an athlete especially those new to our city. But when you've been through it enough, you learn to appreciate it. No one celebrates their own like the city of Philadelphia. Athletes become demigods in this city. Yes, they will let you know when you are not performing well. Every time. But they will also love you if you show effort, aggression, desire, the will to fight. They will love you in this city if you love it the way you love your brother. You will be loved by going above and beyond to show that you care because they care. I mean, he hit the nail on the head. There's a guy that gets it. And there's a, a every now and again, you get an athlete that comes here to Philadelphia that's not native to Philadelphia and they get it. Have you ever seen an athlete connect with the city in such uh, an amazing way that they embrace him almost from the jump? I'd say Ben Simmons is one. Obviously. <laughs> no, you know, there's, there's a couple who come to mind. I think Doc did. I think yeah. Allen did. Allen Iverson did. A blue uh, collar worker with, type uh, of. You know, Kelsey, I mean, he talked about his dad working in a steel mill. I mean, it's real. That's really who he is. Mm -hmm. He is that blue collar working class guy. Cleveland's a lot like Philadelphia mm -hmm. in, in that way. So I think he was always just really comfortable here. Uh, he felt like people got him and, and he got them. And it was just a great fit. Uh, it's a, a remarkable love story between. Jason Kelsey and uh, you know Philadelphia and it's been fun to witness and it's going to continue listen his career is over but the man's still going to be around I know that John Clark joins us from the Novacare complex now and John pretty clear how much Jason Kelsey meant to the city meant to this franchise there's no doubt the city had a huge impact on him as well he, he was it was a love letter basically today to the city of Philadelphia and its fans yeah and I thought it was absolutely perfect it, it's one of the best retirement speeches I've ever seen from an athlete. The only other one that was as significant as, of the, as this is, was Mike Schmitz that I can remember being a kid. But he had emotion. He had passion. And he was gritty. He was tough. He's the Iron Man. I mean, he hasn't missed a game in nine years. So I thought he embodied Philadelphia like no other athlete that I've seen recently. And I thought he had all the right notes in his speech. He had some funny moments. He had the passion and also a message. They should play this to the athletes that come to our city about how to handle the city of Philadelphia and win here, win over the fans. It's good stuff, John. We appreciate uh, you joining us because I think you hit the nail on the head. He really could be the ambassador of how, uh, who's who, of like how to uh, kind of operate as a Philadelphia athlete. Johnny C., thanks for joining us outside the Novacare Complex. I won't forget the parade and what it meant to the city of Philadelphia, the joy it brought our community, and the closure it gave to so many, the stories from fans that had been waiting generations for that moment fulfilled that triumph to another level. A speech that had written itself and one that had symbolized what we had all lived as players, as a team and as a city. That wasn't my speech, it was Philadelphia's. I mean, just an epic speech today, of course, an epic speech then. Uh, Jason Kelsey officially announcing his retirement. Uh, you can watch that press conference in its entirety. Get the tissues ready. I don't care how many times you watch it. You're going to need them. That comes up tonight after our Flyers coverage right around 1030. And Dave Zangaro joins us now. And Dave, you were in the house for the announcement in the auditorium at the Novacare Complex. What did you take away from this day with Jason? It was a special day. Mm -hmm. uh, as a writer, I was impressed by the structure of the speech. I thought it was 
really impressive, but you guys were just talking about it. I think it's the connection he's had with the city. He's been able to explain it better than anyone ever, right? Like, I think there are other players who have had this uh, bond with the city, but Kelsey's been able to put it in the words, and mm -hmm. it's pretty simple. It's basically care and understand that all the fans care too, and that's the, why, the reason they act the way they do mm -hmm. sometimes. And it's a very simple truth that I think eludes a lot of players that come through here, and it's why they don't last here. And a guy like Jason Kelsey has understood it from the moment he got here, and he still understands it on his way out the door. And I think that's why uh, the connection has been so strong between him and the city for this long. This has been one thing that I've been asked about more today than anything else. Of so what are we going to do without Jason? What are we going to do without Jason Kelsey? All the fans asking, right. what are they going to do, Dave? What are they going to do without Jason Kelsey? Yeah, they're going to move on because they have no choice. But. Uh, you know, it's funny because I think we talk so much about how legendary he is and mm -hmm. how much he means to the spirit of the team and to the city. He meant a lot to them on the football yeah. field, too. I mean, he was still playing at an all-pro level. They're going to miss number 62 on the field, and not just what he did physically, but what he did mentally. He was such an integral part of that offense, such a big help to Jalen Hurts, such a big help mm -hmm. to Nick Sirianni. Uh, they're going to miss that. There's no way around it. You can't just replace him. You don't do that. He's a legend for a reason. But they knew this day was coming. Even if they didn't know it was coming this year, they've been preparing for it. Heck, they, they've been preparing for it for years. I mean, they drafted Isaac Sayamalu mm -hmm. back in 2016 Just to eventually replace yeah. Jason Kelsey. So a couple years ago, they drafted Cam Jurgens, and that's really where it starts. Yeah. You know, Jeff Statlin, we saw him you know, bear it out there. Obviously, we talk about Statlin University quite a bit, and he has such a special relationship with Jason Kelsey. You saw him give him a hug, and Stout tweeting this out saying, Jason, some of my fondest coaching moments have been by your side these past 11 seasons. I'm so proud of the player you've worked to become and legacy you've built. I will miss having you by my side. It has been my honor, and I congratulate you on an incredible career. You, you, you see special relationships, Barrett, and I know you've had that with coaches over the years, but this has to be one of the more unique relationships between a player and a coach at the NFL level. Absolutely. You, got, you had virtually a coach on the field when you had Jason Kelsey and how he uh, ran his team. I mean, there will be two guys that really are going to miss him the most, and that will be Coach Stalin, number one. But even more importantly than that, be Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts had a coach on the field plus a guy that he can bounce ideas off on the field. There were times when, you know, you call the mic, he comes up and does what every center does. You call the mic, that way you can call the protection, call the, what you're going to do for blocking schemes. But Kelsey brought a lot more than that also. He was reading safeties. He was getting the guys in better positions to do blocks. You know, he would tell, turn around and say, hey, you've seen this look before. Mm. Why don't you check to this play? He, that's the type of guy Jason Kelsey was. And he's going to be missed the most by Jalen Hurts and, you know, his, his departure. I'm not saying anything about Cam Jurgens because, you know, physically, He'll be on the field. He'll do a great job. But mentally, that's the aspect that you're going to miss the most from Jason Kelsey. One of my favorite things in recent years would be talking to young offensive linemen about the offensive line room. And they'd be like, yeah, I mean, Kelsey and Stout are in there just speaking a completely different language <laughs> than everyone else. They were on such a different level. Yeah. yeah, they're going to miss a lot of that. Yes. It's going to be interesting because, you know, you, you've got – the contingency plans, right? Cam Jurgens is here now. How hard is it going to be to actually then formulate a, a successful game plan not having that coach on the field? Yeah, they're going to miss that, but like physically, Cam Jurgens is what yes, they want, yeah. and he is kind of a mold of Kelsey. Not saying he's ever going to be that good, but there's a reason they drafted him with the second round pick, and I think physically, he offers a lot that Kelsey did. Mentally, he'll have to grow into yeah. that. That's going to be a long process. Giant shoes to fill. Huge. Giant shoes to fill.